Okay, everybody, it's uh, six o'clock. I call to order the 17th uh, regular Common Council meeting. Um, just to let everybody know I'm the council president, I will be chairing the council meeting tonight. Mayor Vandersteen, uh, who serves as the vice chair for the Great Lakes uh, and St. Lawrence uh, Cities Initiative Board, is attending their mid-year board meeting uh, in Chicago today and wasn't able to attend. So, City Clerk, could you please uh, read the quote? Thank you, Mr. President. It is not joy that makes us grateful. It is gratitude that makes us joyful. Thank you. Uh, uh, City Clerk, uh, please call the roll. There are nine present. Thank oh, you. No, there are eight present, sorry. Um, Dean Decker is excused, and Mary Lynn uh, is going to be attending late. Uh, if you could please uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you for that. Looking for a motion uh, for 1.3, Ryan? Ryan? Thank you, Mr. President. I move to approve the minutes from our previous meeting. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. All right, we'll move on to uh, one point. Uh, 1.4 mayor's uh, an announcements, appointments, I'm sorry. Um, city city uh, attorney, Chuck Adams. Thank you. So these appointments are pursuant to the requirements of section 7.30 of the Wisconsin statutes. The mayor herewith submits for your approval the list of nominations for election inspectors for all elections in 2020 and 2021. And that'll lay over. 1.5. 1.5 are also mayoral uh, appointments. This is uh, the mayor submitting the following appointment for your consideration. Robert Heimerl to be considered for appointment to the Architectural Review Board to fill the unexpired term of Scott Matula, whose term expires April 20, 2020. That will also lay over. 1.6, confirmation of mayor's appointments. This is confirmation of the mayor's uh, appointment, submitting the following appointment for your consideration, Cole Phillips, to be considered for appointment to the mayor's international committee. Thank you, I'm looking for a motion. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the confirmation of Cole Phillips to the mayor's international committee. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. City, city clerk, could you please call the roll? Eight eyes. Thank you. Okay, 1.7, we're looking for a presentation, findings of the Riverbend Neighborhood Master Plan, um, November 2019 by Chad Pelichek, uh, Director of uh, Planning and Development. Where's him? So tonight I'm going to review the um, findings of the Riverbend Neighborhood Master Plan that we had uh, taken this initiative on for the past three to four months. So the Riverbend Neighborhood, as shown in this map, is an area that uh, is primarily from the Sheboygan River on the north side where some of the redevelopment is happening today with the Dalmas Decor and the Lakeshore Technical College and the former Boat Doctors. Um, so the north end of that down to roughly Pennsylvania and then the river to the river. So it's kind of this peninsula um, of the Sheboygan River. So the Riverbend neighborhood is also, um, this map just shows that it's 
close proximity, as you know, to downtown Sheboygan, which gives it some amenities uh, for future redevelopment, uh, especially with the reconstruction of the Pennsylvania Avenue Bridge. So as part of this planning process, um, we initiated with a consultant, Grafe, from Milwaukee, two community meetings. Uh, were held at the Kiwanis Park Shelter, one on June 20th, 2019, where 22 local residents attended, and then another one on August 22nd, where 12 residents attended. As it relates to the residents that provided input and the um, people, stakeholders within, the, within that specific neighborhood, four neighborhood goals were established as part of this plan. So the first one is to support redevelopment opportunities, investing in infrastructure to support catalytic projects, which we'll talk about shortly, and establish appropriate areas for mixed use and higher density land uses. The second goal is to create safe and attractable neighborhood connectivity. Um, as you know, North 14th Street travels through this corridor um, from roughly the river to Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, that is the, one of the highest count intersections for traffic counts in the city with about 21,000 cars a day traveling through that intersection. So connectivity with residential on one side and the other side and kind of connecting the whole district is, uh, is going to be important and traffic calming measures and pedestrian and bicycle friendliness is going to be a key. Um, attracting investment and sense of pride in the neighborhood to provide programs and resources to property owners and promote home ownership. And the fourth goal is to establish a neighborhood identity by combining the natural and built environmental uh, character with the future redevelopment and infrastructure. So starting with the first major initiative, and in, in it's a little hard to read, but the uh, infrastructure investments that the plan identified were was this primarily this corridor of North 14th Street from roughly the river or Niagara Avenue down to Pennsylvania uh, Avenue and in that area it identified four uh, potential areas for reinvestment um, uh, four areas for re infrastructure reinvestment in the in this whole district so along the 14th Street um, corridor uh, pedestrian crosswalk connections has been identified as a crucial thing to connect the neighbors from the west side of 14th Street with the neighbors on the east side. Um, and then the North Commerce Street. So we'll talk more about it, but North Commerce Street has some huge redevelopment opportunities as it relates to the Mayline uh, property being vacant. Um, so as that looks, as we look forward to redevelopment in that area, North Commerce Street from roughly Wisconsin Avenue to Pennsylvania Avenue is a brick paved street right now that's got some uh, challenges with it. There's some infrastructure needs underneath it. It's a fairly large reconstruction project. The city has never embarked on reconstructing that, not knowing what the future for the redevelopment of the Mayline site looks like. And then the, the fourth and final infrastructure improvement is to add some type of river, river walk or river access along the river um, from the Pennsylvania Avenue Bridge up to the bike trail that crosses uh, just at the uh, former boat doctors or the Lakeshore Technical College site. <clears throat> Some other in infrastructure investments identified were streetscaping and signage, so we'll be looking at opportunities to engage some of that and giving that, uh, that neighborhood some character and some identity. Um, under the infrastructure investments, this map just shows a section of 14th Street. So on the north side of the map is the Gloss Coffee Shop and the former Boat Doctors. Um, and then it's Niagara Avenue intersection and goes down to the Wisconsin. So the south side of the map is the Wisconsin Avenue. And it's recommending some enhanced um, pedestrian crossings there. Uh, to try to slow traffic. There poses some challenges. This is a state highway uh, through this area, um, so we don't have a lot of jurisdiction over it, so we just can't go in and make major improvements, um, but recommending some of these uh, smaller pedestrian and uh, bicycle-friendly um, improvements. This is, these two maps show North Commerce Street. So this is North Commerce from Wisconsin Avenue to Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, as you can see, it is a brick street with a bunch of concrete that's been added and fixed over the years as DPW did maintenance on it. Um, the consultant has proposed a design that would basically bring more of an urban character with, <clears throat> excuse me, sidewalks and street trees. 
and connecting some of the streets and then some design cross sections to go uh, with that to uh, consider as we move forward to make it more of a kind of a pedestrian friendly or uh, environment. Under the infrastructure investment recommendations, there's also a recommendation, and we'll have to talk about this, but about potentially saving some of those bricks uh, from that street and reusing them to create a brick paver sidewalk or crosswalks in this area to kind of continue on because this is one of the last brick bricked streets that the city has. So how can we you know, improve it, but also kind of preserve some of that historical character? And then the last uh, river access river walk project that was identified would be some type of river walk similar to what we have along our river, particularly uh, in the area along uh, Pennsylvania Avenue by Rotary Park. So how to facilitate some development but still provide some public access to the water. Um, and maybe in some of the areas where the road street right away dead ends into the river, uh, providing some additional amenities uh, centered around ADA canoe launch similar to what was uh, installed at Kiwanis Park and maybe even some type of chain ferry uh, similar to what's in Sagatok, Michigan uh, to connect residents from this neighborhood with Kiwanis Park without having to kind of go through that Erie and 14th intersection. Under the redevelopment opportunities, uh, two catalytic sites were explored and looked at. So the one, the first one that Catalytic site number one is the Riverfront Residential. This is the primarily the property of the May Line um, and some property that the Redevelopment Authority owns directly north of the Sushas Bar. Um, and then catalytic site number two is a mixed use infill site and that would be on the west side of uh, Commerce Street. And I'll show you some more details shortly. Under the residential, the Riverfront Residential site, particularly the Mayline site, the preferred option for redeveloping the Mayline is into senior housing or senior living. Um, the thought here is that some type of <coughs> senior living would allow for older residents to age in place um, and have the services that they're looking for kind of all in this neighborhood. So as we look as city planners, we've, we feel we've done very well uh, with your support of developing and finding developers to develop market rate housing, affordable housing, and now some condos. The piece we have not really embraced is 55 and older housing. We do will have an aging population in the next few years uh, with the baby boomers retiring. And in order to uh, provide some of the services that those that that demographic is looking for, the idea is is to maybe develop some of this. Uh, Mayline property into a uh, senior living community of independent living, assisted living, and, and or memory care. <clears throat> so the consultant has come up with a couple uh, plans for how that might look. Um, in the document, there is a preferred site design, which is urban riverfront apartments. Um, particularly, this would be a multi-story, high-density development with uh, at-grade or a little bit under grade parking and some surface parking, um, and then leveraging some of the city-owned buildings as adaptive reuse. So these are just some drawings of what that could look like. It's very similar to the apartment developments that you see going up in the downtown. Um, there is some opportunity to go multi-story here, so um, we're gonna be recommending to maximize the highest density possible um, on this site. The alternate site design uh, for the second one is, is a senior apartments, independent senior apartments and some type of townhome development. So this would be a multi-story building on the south side of this property with townhomes, um, individually owned townhomes on the on north side or row homes. Um, so it, it'll really, the, the market will dictate what this final development plan looks like. And then the catalytic site number two is the mixed-use in mixed use infill site on the west side of North Commerce Street. So on the bottom of the slide is two, on the bottom right is two buildings that are there today. Um, one is a multi-story, it was a mattress factory, I believe, that Cream City brick on the top left um, could be converted into some housing or other type of uses adaptive like reuse residential loft those types of uses and then the building on the right in the picture is the building you see on the corner of North Commerce Street in Pennsylvania today um, and that could be 
uh, a, redeveloped into a restaurant or a coffee shop or a retail space or something to kind of augment the senior development. The last item that the plan addresses is encouraging reinvestment in the existing neighborhood. So the housing to stock to the west of this of the Mayline property um, is primarily a mix of rental and owner-occupied housing. Um, the River Bend neighborhood was one of the city's targeted neighborhoods for neighborhood revitalization um, as part of those focus areas in our strategic plan. So we have inventoried this entire neighborhood and have um, dealt with garbage complaints and nuisance violations and building code violations. So we are working with that. Uh, the plan also encourages the city to work with property owners in the planning area to encourage reinvestment in their properties. And in 2020, as part of the TIF extension that the Common Council approved, we'll be rolling out a new program for facade and landscaping grants in this area to provide funding uh, to homeowners that live along Pennsylvania and North 14th Street corridors. So the next steps, the city staff is working with interested developers in redeveloping the former Mayline property uh, into senior housing. We've got a couple of developers that are interested in and are looking through plans to um, come up with something that might work. Uh, the redevelopment of the former Mayline will require the expansion of TID 19. So we created TID 19 in 2018 as part of the um, condo development, Waters Ed condominium development, uh, that district will need to be expanded to include the Mayline property. Um, encouraging mixed use of redevelopment of the properties to the west of North Commerce Street and along Pennsylvania. So we'll be working with interested parties to uh, re do some redevelopment and new construction in those areas. North Commerce Street will need to be reconstructed once we know what the redevelopment plans are for the former Mayline. Implementation of the facade landscaping grant program for existing property owners in 2020 and then planning for North 14th Street streetscaping and bicycle pedestrian enhancements to kind of connect the neighborhood. So in a nutshell, that's it. The document is in, the full document is in the council agenda. It'll be referred to the planning commission and back to the council for the meeting, the next meeting. And we look for support from this body as we move forward in this key area. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Does anybody in the council have questions? Seeing none, thank you. We'll move forward to uh, 1.8, another presentation. All right, Sheboygan, Sheboygan recognized uh, for performance, management, and leadership. Uh, International City County Management Association, ICMA, has recognized the city of Sheboygan as a recipient of the 2019 Certificate of Distinction in Performance Management. Sheboygan is one of 63 nationwide and two in Wisconsin receiving recognition for the ICMA. This, this award acknowledges Sheboygan's commitment to collect, analyze, and report data transparently. Award-winning committees are, are committed to employees who work continually to verify data, ensure reliability, train staff, and performance measurement, and report data to the public through budgets, newsletters, and information provided to citizens and elected officials. This is, a, is the second consecutive year in which the city of Sheboygan has earned this distinguished, distinguished award. For details on, on this recognition, please visit the ICMA website, imca.org, and browse the performance management topic. So having said that, I would like to present this award to Daryl Hoffman, our city administrator. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, again, uh, this would not occur without the help uh, of staff members who have participated in this process. Again, it's very important for the city to identify uh, benchmarks and goals, track them, uh, report them out to you as, uh, in your different committees, 
and then ultimately uh, convey this information to uh, our citizens and our property owners. Uh, Kerry Aarons from my staff was uh, critical in processing uh, the application and we were pleased, as you mentioned, to be one of only 63 communities uh, nationwide to receive this recognition. Thank you very much. All right, City Clerk, uh, any public forum? There is no one this evening. All right, 1.9 uh, or 1.10 1, 1 announcements. Um, I will get my steps in. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to present a proclamation to the Pops Band. So whereas the Sheboygan Pops Concert Band was founded in 1989 and it's celebrating its 30th year, and whereas Sheboygan has a long history of concert bands, including the Sheboygan Municipal Band and the R Rural Band, and whereas the Pops Band is the official band of the Sheboygan, uh, of the city of Sheboygan. And whereas the Pops Band entertains thousands of people each year through their winter and spring concerts and their Fountain Park concerts and, and city parades. And whereas the Pops Band is an integral part of the city of Sheboygan arts community. Now, therefore, standing in for, for Mike Vandersteen, mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim Sunday, December 8th, 2019 as Sheboygan Pops Band uh, Circuit Concert Band Day in the city of Sheboygan and call upon the citizens of Sheboygan to support the wonderful organization both financially and through attendance in their many performances. In testimony there, thereof, I here un, unto set, set my hand and caused the great seal of Sheboygan to be affixed, done, and on the eight, on this eighth day of December in the year of our Lord, 2019. So I'd like to give this to you. Thank you. On behalf of the members sitting here today and others that couldn't be here tonight, thank you very much for recognizing the Sheboygan Pops Band. Sheboygan Pops Concert Band uh, performs two concerts, uh, a winter and a spring concert, typically in a church. This year, our winter concert is this Sunday, December 8th, 2 o'clock at Zion Evangel Evangelical Covenant Church on 6th and St. Clair. So we're hoping everyone can attend. We will have a reception following to celebrate our 30th anniversary. We are made up of youth from teenage to we have a gentleman who is 90 plus years old and still playing in the band. And he is at almost every performance. The only way he misses is if he truly can't. Um, we meet at South High, so we would like to thank the Sheboygan School District, the Rec Department, for allowing us to use their facilities for their, our Tuesday night rehearsals. We are a nonprofit organization, so we do look forward to people coming and attending, and we don't have any other means of uh, funding, so we do take a free will donation. So thank you. All right, thank you. So 2.1, a motion um, motion to receive and file all our O's, receive all our C's. Um, Mary Lynn Donahue. I 
is so moved. Second. This will be on 2.2 on the consent agenda through 2.7. City Clerk. Alder person born. Did yours? Did you vote? It's not coming oh. through. <laughs> Nine eyes. Thank you. Uh, Three point one. Um, resolution number 118-1920 by Elder Persons Wolf and Donahue adopting the final River Bend neighborhood master plan. Uh, we we would like to see that layover and uh, referred uh, to City Plan Commission. Um, oh, okay, uh, 3.2 through uh, 3.5 will uh, be referred to uh, various committees. Um, 3.15. No. Yeah, they're all referred. Sorry about that. All right, so 4.1. Um, RC number 192-19-20 um, by, by licensing hearing and public safety committee to whom it was referred pursuant of RO number 102-19-20 by city clerk submitting various licenses applications. Withdrawal of beverage operator's license applications number 3000. Uh, recommends filing the application. Um, Alder Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to receive the RC and file the application. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. 4.2, RC number 193-1920 by licensing hearing and public safety committee to whom was referred RO number 109-1920 by city clerk submitting various license applications recommends granting the licenses uh, receive RC and grant Licenses, Alder Sorensen. Thank you, Council President. I move to receive the RC and grant the licenses. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. RC 4.3, uh, number 194-19-20 by Finance and Personnel Committee to whom referred resolution number 113-1920 by Alder Persons Donahue and Boren authorizing the issuance and sale of, of up to 2, $2,323,791 in sewage system rev revenue bonds series 2019D and providing for other details and covenants with respect thereto, recommends adopting the resolution. Receive, um, Alder, Alder Donahue. Okay, so I move to I uh, move to uh, receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Second. Any questions? City Clerk. Nine eyes. Thank you. Uh, Four point. 4.4, uh, RC number 195-1920 by Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 114-19-20 by, 
by Alder Persons Donahue and Boren authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute an engagement letter with Quirles and Brady uh, LLP to serve as the special tax counsel with regards to the proposed lease financing for the acquisition in garbage and recycling carts. Um, Alder Donahue. Thank you. I uh, move to uh, receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Second. City Clerk, please call. Nine eyes. Thank you. 4.5 RC number 196-19-20 by licensing and hearing, hearings and public safety committee to whom was referred resolution number 115-19-20 by Elder Person Wolf and Donahue authorizing the mayor to sign a letter to the United States Secretary of the State consenting to continued initial refugee settlement in Sheboygan uh, pursuant to the executive order 13888 one, recommends adopting the resolution. Alder Sorensen. Thank you, Council President. I move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. City Clerk. Nine eyes. Thank you. 4.6 RC number 197 19-20 by Public Works Committee to whom it was referred resolution number 116 19 by Alder Persons Wolf and Sorensen authorizing the Department of Public Works to turn off power to the city of Sheboygan Municipal Armory Auditorium due to the hazardous conditions present within the building that pose dangers to maintenance employees and others needing to access the building recommends adopting the resolution. Um, Alder Sorensen. Thank you, Council President. I move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any discussion? Jim. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I have a question. Uh, I, I have no problem with turning off the power down there, but does anybody from our finance department uh, know uh, what that is going to save the city in, electri in electricity? What does that bill? <clears throat> what does the bill run down there a year for the armory? Anybody got an idea, David? Uh, it, it 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 would be minimal. Um, it's just low power um, managing, you know, like the sump pump and and some security lighting for such. So, I mean, it's not running. You know, the mechanical systems have been turned off. Right. And so it's, it's minimal electrical. This is more of a, a safety hazard. Okay, thank you. David, just one question. Um, in reference to Alder Boren's question, the main reason for that reduction in, in cost is mainly because of the fact that the building is empty. We're not operating any lights only the sump pump basically and and some lights from time to time that's that would be correct that would be correct that again um, it's security lighting some pumps in the building the mechanical systems are all all been shut down uh, shut down as well as it's not occupied so it, it really doesn't have a, much power okay thank you Todd Alder Sorensen thank you council president um, David or Ryan do you just kind of want to talk about too and I one question that I have is, is just the water level that's in the basement and this is part of the discussion too that we had at Public Works about why we want to turn off the electricity is uh, with the water table being at a very all-time high um, and, and what just that what safety concern that has as well too with water level with with mold um, circulating with that as well too and, and just having the water interact with the with the circuits down there yeah, uh, correct correct and that's what we discussed yeah. at the committee is that at the, the armory would it 
given its age and its condition, as well as the factors that we're now experiencing with near record high Lake Michigan water levels, that area given its proximity to the Sheboygan River as well as Lake Michigan, uh, it, the water table is severely saturated with the high water. And uh, we're having infiltration into the basement. Uh, the sump pumps are, 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 are working, but yet um, the water <coughs> is at such a level in terms of uh, the flow into the building. It's pretty much stabilized with lake levels in, in the area of the water table. So it's, it's pretty much equalized within the area. It's always damp. It's uh, created a hazardous condition. The, the, the danger that we've, we have is the, the electrical service is in the same location of this basement and where all the mechanicals are. So if there is ever a problem, it would be very dangerous for our electricians or anyone to access that area without uh, shutting off power to the building completely. Uh, given that and plaster falling off the ceiling, um, we're very concerned in terms of the hazards that it poses to our, our, our employees. And uh, it's our recommendation that given that the pumps aren't able to really keep up with the, the amount of water that's infiltrating the basement as it is, as I mentioned, it's equalized in there as a, as a kind of a steady state. This is our recommendation to shut it off for a safety. Thank you. Any additional questions? Seeing none, city clerk. Nine eyes. Thank you. Motion's approved. Um, 4.7 RC number 198-19-20 by finance and personnel. Uh, committee to whom it was referred, direct referral resolution number 117-19-20 by older person Donahue and Bourne, authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a lease with Lease Servicing Center, Inc. to finance the, finance the purchase of the automated garbage and recycling system and to authorize the appropriate city officials to purchase the garbage and recycling carts funded by the lease. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Um, I believe the motion that would be appropriate at this point is to receive the report of the Finance and Personnel Committee and approve the resolution. Thank you for that motion and support. Any questions? City Clerk. Nine eyes. Thank you. Motion's approved. 4.8 RC number 199-19-20 uh, by Public Works Committee to whom was referred a copy of the direct referral resolution number 117-19-20 by older persons Donahue and Bourne authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a lease with a lease with lease servicing center Inc. to finance and purchase the automated garbage and recycling system and to authorize the appropriate city officials to purchase the garbage and recycling carts funded by lease. Alder Sorensen. Thank you, Council President. I move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Need to file. Need to file. Uh, I move to file. <laughs> Thank you. We have a motion and support. Second. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, city clerk. Nine eyes. Motion passes. 4.9 RC number 200-19-20 by Licensing Hearing and Public Safety Committee to whom was referred General Ordinance number 33-19-20 by Alder Persons Donahue, Ackley, Feldy, Savaggio, and Sorensen amending section 70-251 of the Municipal Code so as to ban the carry possession or control of any firearm 
fast meal, firearm, and concealed weapon in the ci in city buildings upon which such ban is posted and to provide certain definitions and terms contained in the ordinance recommends adopting the ordinance. Alder Sorensen. Thank you, Council President. I move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any questions? Alder Bourne. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> I had a discussion earlier today with the city attorney uh, I, had a, I had a concern with this from the point of view of back when the state passed concealed carry a number of years ago. Uh, there was a quandary of whether buildings should post the signs or they shouldn't post the signs. In regards to uh, liability, if you, post the, if you post the signs and happen, uh, something happens, or if you, don't pass, uh, if you don't post the signs and something happens. And I guess I'd like an update for the rest of the council that I got from the city attorney today as to how that liability factor is currently looked at in case there was an incident, if we do go ahead and uh, post the signs in the city buildings. So I'm not concerned necessarily about liability. When, when the uh, law first came out uh, that approved uh, concealed carry, uh, there was some question about the language uh, uh, of of the uh, ordinance or of the statutes at the time, it's become pretty clear that what really happened is the legislature put some language in there about liability uh, that really what it really means is nothing. That there's no change in liabilities whether or not you post or you don't post, uh, and, and thereby uh, allow or not allow uh, weapons in city hall. So uh, the issue here really uh, comes to, is there any liability on the part of the city? Anything you do here really doesn't change the level of liability that the city would uh, bear uh, should something happen. Thank you, Chuck. Any additional questions? I do want to make one, one statement uh, just from a personal perspective. I am going to vote, for, vote um, in acceptance of this. But um, I do want people to understand that we don't have the security like uh, the county courthouse does. We don't have the, the, the dollars and the, the backing to be able to support that at this time. But by passing this, it also means that we know that technically bad people should read the signs and not come in with a firearm or weapon. But it also means that good people that are trained and have concealed carry are also not going to be able to come in and protect themselves or protect others if a bad situation were happening. So I just want people to understand that by doing this, I, I understand the spirit of it, I understand the, the concern and the care of it, but it, it's also our responsibility that we need to continue to look at the city and um, our employees and our constituents when we are in a meeting or in, a, in an event that we do look at security and we take it very seriously. Um, Alder Donahue. Um, just a, a couple of small points, and, and I would certainly defer to, um, to uh, City Attorney Adams, but in addition to no change in liability issues um, uh, as a result of the 2011 carry uh, conceal law, it's my understanding that municipalities in general have a pretty absolute immunity uh, as a municipality um, with respect to what are called discretionary or legislative decisions as opposed to ministerial decisions. So I do think that the city's liability in posting here is, uh, well, I would never say zero, but I would say vanishingly small. Um, and second, uh, and I, I appreciate Alder Wolf's uh, uh, comments. Um, these are really interesting times. Um, the county courthouse is interesting. That was the most secure building, uh, uh, I think, in the county long before they did all of their extra stuff. Um, and, uh, uh, and so that's good. That's good for the courthouse. Um, I really appreciate the fact that this building is open to the public. We don't put people through screening devices and so on and so forth. The point of this ordinance from my perspective is to merely reflect 
our desire in this building to not have people with weapons. Some of us who were in the council some years ago had an experience with an alder who, <coughs> you know, was carrying guns, and, and it was deeply disquieting. It was, just, it was just not a good thing. So we are guaranteeing no safety here. Um, anyone walking the streets of any place publicly these days, you have to fantasize that you are secure and safe because that just isn't the case. Um, but it reflects, I think, our philosophy that um, really we're here to do the people's business, people coming in, our citizens and residents coming in, you know, are here to do legitimate business. And, and so, um, so we just think it's a good idea. Um, boy, if we could solve gun violence by just posting signs, hmm, I'd be all for it. Uh, but I think it, this at least reflects a philosophical point of view. And for that reason, I, I think it's worthy of support. Thank you, Alder um, Donahue. Um, Alder Bourne. Thanks, Mr. President. Uh, I share the same uh, I share the same concerns that you do, Mr. President, with this uh, the posting posting City Hall is not going to keep a bad person out of City Hall. Uh, and you know, if if it does help keep somebody away from doing something here, that's fine. But I I share the same concerns you do. I'm going to support this, but uh, I think it's. Uh, I don't know if I want to call it a feel-good feel resolution, but uh, let's hope it does prevent something. But if, if somebody, a bad person, wants to come in here and do something, a sign's not going to stop them. Thank you, Alder Bourne. Any additional questions? Seeing none, City Clerk. Eight eyes, one no. Motion passes. Moving on to uh, 5.1, 5, um, general ordinances. 5.1 through 5.3 uh, will be referred to various committees. Uh, 6.0, 6 other matters authorizing, um, authorized by law. Um, City Attorney Adams. 6.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2020 and June 30, 2021. And that'll be referred to licensing hearings and public safety committee. Um, 7.0, 7, 7 um, Alder Donahue. I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it, we are adjourned, thank you.